and also we can delete and we can perform some of the operations like uh, add change update or remove like this kind of operation in this attributes uh, domains communities comments and tags from rest api using this user interface or otherwise using any kind of python code so this is all about the rest api lab and now we'll be moving on to how to do with workflows using java api so so uh, yeah. Nani, one question here so you said uh, we were doing this using rest api right Yes. So yeah. REST yes. API looks uh, relatively easier. So I don't know why we'll use another thing, Java or Python. Uh, yeah, it's up to us. So if uh, they are giving a kind of development work for importing assets in an automated fashion, we can use like it's up to us. If we are convenient with the code, then we can go with that. Or the rest, if we are convenient with Java. And Groovy, then we can go with this. So it's up to us. We can decide in real time scenario. So these are the things we can do with Colibra. So in this lab, so whatever Colibra in Colibra, whatever we can do, we can see. So yeah, according to our, we can go with this. If we feel this is a bit easy, but for any kind of automation, we can't use this. Like if we are going to import a 10 to 20, like may a thousand of assets, and I have all the details like this. Uh, this like if I have all the asset ID and target ID, source ID, all the attributes and relations. If I'm having this type of content, then I can go ahead with this. But for example, say uh, if you don't have uh, this for most of the scenario, we need to search for each asset. We need to search the UUID for each relation. We need to search the resource ID. So so yeah, if you think it is a bit amazing and I need to go with any kind of automation, then you can use Python or Java or any kind of code. So we can also do it using automation. So if the asset count is limited and if you are interested in the uh, core API user interface, then we can go with this. Yeah, it's up to us. Yeah, let's. Okay, just a minute, guys. I'll be back in two minutes. Yes, and guys, uh, today I'll be like, uh, I have a conflict, so I'll be dropping off at 9 a.m. So until that, we can see. Yes, so yeah, okay, so yes, so it, it's up to us. Uh, we can like utilize the Colibras feature, so based on our requirement too. And yep, so let's continue. And so if you remember, uh, we have a cardinality and validation rules part in this. Colibra's operating model lab that we are yet to see. So we can complete that and then we can move to the Java API and workflows topic. So yes, let me open that. So for that, I will open any of the assets. And I'm clicking on the business term, like the type business term or any kind of assets. So in, as a part of operating model, we can design the attributes uh, for our asset types. So if we think this attributes are not needed, if you think uh, these are the characteristics I need to have in my business term, then we can go ahead and modify the change if you have to me. So if you see the characteristics, I can modify this. I will be having the data access. For example, if I think I should have only one definition for a business asset. So in, in the uh, like, like our last example, we see there is two definition, high and then high with the two day state because i can have uh, i can i have like configured the property of the business term in my dgc like i can have uh, like as many as definition as i want so max is not limited like the definition i can give 10 definition 20 definition likewise so if i think uh, there should be only one definition for a business term and that be valid so then i can limit it in here minimum one maximum one if i think uh, like so for example, note, which is an optional attribute. So if I think a note should be there for a particular business term, 
otherwise it is not valid uh, for any kind of business term a note should be there if i think like that then i can set minimum one so if minimum is zero these are uh, like not mandatory if minimum is one yeah it is mandatory like for the status uh, to be a uh, complete it should be mandatory like it will be mandatory likewise i can have like i i I think I can I have up to three nodes for any kind of asset, then I can have it maximum three. Likewise, so I can control the characteristics of the business term, all the asset types, technology asset, and then the data asset. So I can control the characteristics assets. So I can control the attributes definition and then group by business asset. So if I think uh, a business term should be grouped by only one business asset, then I can set it in one. So that so one business term will not be grouped by multiple business assets. Likewise, if I think so, I can configure it in here. All the relations are given and the attributes are given. And then domain types. So usually Colibra is a limiting like business asset domain will be having business dimension and report catalog. So if we see the tick mark in here, glossary is checked and then. Yeah, glossary is only checked because in glossary only it is colibra suggested like uh, by default it will be like this so if glossary will be only holding the business term so if, if i think i need to have some business term in code list or report catalog i can check in this domain so that in our colibra dgc i can add business term in this domain too like report catalog or ba catalog if in case i think i need to have some kind of like issues in this domain glossary i can configure it in here so for example, uh, by default, Glossary will be having the business system. So I think I need to have some of the business term in BA catalog. I can check in so that in future, uh, the BA catalog domain can also hold business term. Likewise, status. So these are the status, uh, like initial status. Once it is ingested, any kind of asset is created or ingested, it will be candidate. If it is under any kind of workflows and if someone is reviewing, the status will be reflecting as under review, for example. If we open any kind of asset page in here, it will be showing the status of the asset. And yeah, if review is completed, the status can be changed to review. And yeah, if someone is like working on that asset, if it is an issue, they will be working. So the status will be in progress. And if approval is pending, the status can be approval pending and finally accepted. So this, for example, if I am having a workflow for the business term, so if I am starting the workflow, I can change the status of the record. Uh, uh, like the corresponding business asset into under review inside my workflow itself i can set the status so i can set the status as it is in progress like if i like i can set if it is a like a approval workflow i can set the status of the particular business asset into like approval pending state likewise and obsolete it is like uh, so for some of the days if it is useless like no, no one is uh, like for example if i having a workflow for checking which are the assets like the business towards is not using. So for the business term, uh, which uh, don't have any kind of visits for two months or 30 days or 60 days, I can change it into obsolete likewise. And then I can perform operations of all the, I can check the obsolete assets and I can check whether it is valid or like whether it is needed or not. If it is not necessary, I can, I can remove that. So yeah, this other status, once the tablet dashboard is certified, it will be moved on accepted. So those kind of workflows in which we'll be incorporating the status and be changing the status inside the workflows while it is moving to each uh, like in, in each layer in, uh, in each step we'll be changing the asset type as such for for uh, for showing the user in which state the asset is currently being likewise i can have i'm having the status yes so articulation score so i can define it so for example if a uh, if uh, for any newly ingested asset, it will be in the candidate status, and yeah, it will be the artificial score. Like how much trustworthy this is. Like the artificial score will be giving the quality of the asset. So how much we can trust them. Likewise, so for any new asset, none of the business towards or anyone has checked it or any kind of it has not been gone through any kind of workflows. So it is candidate. And. For the data we have ingesting using the data source such as system or any of the JDBC connection, it will be defaultly in the candidate and the value is zero or five or 20. I can set it in here if I want. 
and if it is in progress, it is default value provided by Kodibra. I can I can change this if I have admin access as per our requirement. And if it is in progress, I can change it to 10. And then like multiply if it is under review, it is the value is 50 percentage. And if everything is completed of a particular asset and if it is in a good status, and if it is an accepted status, then I can change it to 100. So that if the value like artificial score is under, yes, okay, this asset is like good to use. It will shows the asset quality. And we have data quality rules and validation rules. So validation rule uh, like basically will be acting on the attributes. So uh, for any business term, I am like if the business term is having a definition, it is valid. So those kind of uh, groovy scripts I can give. So in the PPT, we start the day like if the description is not empty, then the business asset is valid. And then like those uh, those attributes I can check and validate for a particular business term. And yes, I can validate from this domain itself. I can click or check on the assets for any kind of uh, glossary. There will be list of business term and I can select the business term. And if I have enabled this validation rule, then I can directly validate on that. Uh, domain page I can see. So these are the terms having a definition and these are the term like business terms which doesn't have definition. Likewise as per my validation rule I can check and validate. And the data quality rule is uh, basically like uh, it will be on the relations. So for example if a business term is not related to any of the data asset then it is like the quality is like it is not in a good quality. Likewise I can configure the rule. So the main difference between these two rules is validation rules will be acting on the attributes and data quality rules will be uh, mostly based on the relations. So for example, if a business term is not having any kind of a code sets or code value, then it is not valid. Likewise, I can configure. Then uh, the results, the data quality results will be shown in the asset page. Like for, for example, if I sh show it in here, Okay, so it's in here. So this partial payment. So yes, so we can check the status of the asset in here, and then yeah. So in di as we have diagram, pictures, responsibilities. So the data quality will also be appearing in here once that is configured. So I can check like the quality, how much it will be in this left pane. Data quality if we have the rule configured, then it also will be showing in like while clicking the data quality in this left pane, then I can see the quality like uh like whether the asset is passing the data quality rule or not. Likewise. So this is how it will be for a particular business term. So if I have configured this for a particular business term, then uh, like across the Colibra, like across multiple domains and committees, I can have a uh, same kind of configuration for the, for all the business term in Colibra. I can configure it like in here so that the characteristic will be reflecting in all the domains and communities. Yes. So in case I need to change in some scenarios, if I want to add some of the things and remove some of the things, I can go ahead. I can change the characteristics of the asset types that is present in Colibra as a part of operating like model design. In case if you want to change, we can do this. Yes. OK, so then. Uh, and Nandini, next, uh, uh, let's move on this. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah, Nandini, one question. Mm -hmm. So on this uh, data quality rules, right? Uh, so uh, uh, where like, you know, we are going to uh, let's say for that business term, right? So where and how like, you know, we will uh, put a data quality rule uh, in this screen. So for example, uh, uh, the so what I'm trying to understand in this page uh, that let's say like, I'm you know, sure. a yeah, I mean a business term requires a data quality rule 
to be applied on it okay so how uh, like you know we'll configure like you know that rule uh, in this screen so that is okay, okay. Uh, let me show that So how to configure a data called the rule, right? Or that is the question, right? Like, like for demonstration purpose, I don't have access for configuring the data, like the, for setting this business term, but I theoretically can explain how to configure the data quality rule, how to create one. So I need to have global permission. So I don't have permission. That's why like in here itself, I don't see like edit option for each of the things. So for validation rule in this PT, there's a groovy script. For data quality rule, I can show how to create a data quality rule. So yes, uh, if it's okay, I shall I show it in here. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, yes. Okay, so yeah, we'll be uh, navigating to the asset type, asset type page like business term, and then we'll be clicking on the data quality rules. I'll be clicking add. So, for example, so in this data quality rule, I will be having an any kind of add icon in here if I have the global access, and then I will be giving the name, description, path, and and the values and the metrics. For example, so so the metric is the rules that define like. Matrix is the rules. So yeah, like the categorization in the categorization, I'll be having the relation types. Like in the categorization, I will be have adding the relation types such as uh, business terms as acronyms, or in case of data set, uh, data set is having a source data set likewise the relation types that determines the subscore, subscore of the metric so if i want to like uh, check the quality by while uh, like if, if the quality they uh, like if i want to have a quality data quality rule so like if a business term is having any kind of acronym then it is good to go or otherwise it is not valid then i can mention the relation type in here and then so like it will be displayed in the data quality uh, dashboard as shown in here. So we can see how many rows are like passing, how many rows are failing. So if it is in any domain, we can there may be 10 to 20 rows of business terms and how many rows are passing and failing, passing fraction and result. So let us see this dashboard. So this is how it will be look. So yeah, traceability, responsibility, history and files, I will be having quality also. So like this, the score will be displayed. The asset quality. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, so Nandi, so one question. Mm -hmm. Yes, one by one. Uh, yes, Nandi, my question was, so this uh, data quality rules, uh, we need to set up in data quality module of like Colibra, not in DGC, right? Yeah, we, we, yeah, like there is two options we can set via that. And like if I we have a DQ connector and then I have if I have configured that with my Colibra DGC, then I can show it or otherwise I can manually set it in here. Like this I data think. quality rules is mainly like, uh, yeah, so that data quality rule will be mainly on the 
like uh, the data inside uh, the source like okay. the column is employee id is not null likewise the it will be mainly focusing on the data inside uh, present in any kind of source this data quality rules mostly like uh, will be on the relations whether it has such kind of relation in colibra or not it will be checking that so yeah okay, so we, this is within uh, like uh, colibra dgc right yes uh, on the metadata itself yeah yes yes yeah this is on the metadata about the like the terms and assets in colibra okay so yeah, yeah i will uh, be for sharing this link hmm. Yeah, so Nandini. Uh, yeah, sorry, I lost uh, connection in between. Okay, okay. Uh, so that's why. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yes. yeah. So I think uh, yeah, Nitin already asked uh, that uh, question. So so everything. Uh, so on the data quality rules and everything, like you know, we are setting up uh, in the DQ data quality module, right? Mm -hmm. So here, so here, so you are saying like you know, for each uh, like you know term or each. Asset that we are mm -hmm. on board, we have to set it up like you know manually, right? Yes. So what? Yes, uh, uh, so so my question is that like you know I mean how uh, because in the data quality module we may have like you know thousands of like you know so let's say like you know uh, uh, we connect to a data source, okay, and that data source may be having mm -hmm. like you know thousand of tables, right? And mm -hmm. uh, each table might be might be having let's say ten twenty columns or maybe more than that. Mm -hmm. when we are conducting profiling or let's say like you know and we are finding some observations there and we are putting mm -hmm. some data quality room there right so how uh, that uh, i mean configuring each in the dgc module uh, will be uh, i mean will be challenging right so i mean uh, so if uh, so uh, do we really uh, i mean in real in real case scenario do we really configure manually one by one i mean if you leave aside this uh, integration part right i mean how frequently like okay. you know we configure manually in the dgc module this uh, data quality so uh, yeah okay so so in this dq connector so for each table do we need to have the rules like manually configuring 10 to 20 rules for each table like it will be a huge work you are thinking about that right correct yeah okay So, uh, so, so yeah. So in the data quality, <laughs> no. What I'm uh, what I'm saying is that so say for example you have uh, uh, you have let's say uh, one table right, and in one table let's hmm. say you have ten columns right, and when you hmm. do a when you run a profiling, you get like hmm. you know uh, some observations highlighted by uh, Colibra that uh, uh, you know. Uh, Uh, that like you know there are some discrepancies and all that which needs to be looked at right now the next step would be like you know to put a data quality rule to remediate that correct so this is for mm -hmm. one table yes. i'm saying and that rule okay. could be on any of the dimensions or maybe for multiple yes. dimensions right mm -hmm. it could be for completeness mm -hmm. consistency what not yeah. so that is so we are talking about mm -hmm. only one table so similarly like you know there might be like you know other tables which would uh, which might require this uh, data quality uh, data quality you know uh, mm -hmm. checks to be done or rules to be implemented right so my question is that again so if we are going to do it manually one by one configure in this dgc by referring to mm -hmm. what we have implemented in the data quality module so that uh, like you know would be would be a huge exercise right so that is my point like that i came like so do we uh, in this dgc we are going to implement the ideas whichever is we having dq connector like that is a question like in here uh, are you asking in data quality rules in here we have to configure Correct. one yeah, by one yeah right here only so, so uh, yes yes okay so okay. how so yes so this uh, data quality rule is uh, mostly on the relation so it's so in dgc usually we don't uh, import like uh, like we don't have the actual data it is only we have metadata the column names and all so this in this data quality we can configure the relations we can check the quality of the relations so for example a business term the main motto of the business term is like for example i am having a business term profit and i have to group all the data assets 
related to profit with this business term. So if the business asset, uh, business term profit is there, and I don't have any kind of relation with any of the data assets in the Colibra DGC, then it is like a unnecessary thing. Likewise for quality, for, for like this quality in this data quality rules, we'll be checking the quality of the relations. For, uh, for example, if an issue, uh, it should be related to any kind of data set, then only the issues it is in good quality. Likewise, this data quality rule is mostly based on the relations that we have in Colibra, but that data quality rule in the DGC, like DQ connector, is mostly on the data, like the actual okay. data, whichever it is in reality, okay. the physical layer. Okay. So that is okay. the difference. So yeah. So it's not the it's yeah. not the same thing uh, which you mean. <laughs> yes, yes. As okay. Yes. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. And yeah, and also we are having DQ lab. So on that time we can see how much. Yeah, yeah. That, so yeah, what I want. As as we have, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry, Nitin. Just, just, just yeah. one thing. Yeah. Uh, so Nandini, so this screen, right? This asset quality that you are showing, right? So this is what I wanted mm -hmm. to understand. Like, uh, how? So what are these codes like, you know, when we are talking about this accuracy and uh, these different uh, dimensions codes. So is it not on the data? I mean, I think this is this this uh, like uh, this pie that they are showing, right, it mm. is from that data quality, uh, data quality yeah. score rule so on that. This is for like case. asset data quality. Huh, like it is a uh, like this metrics or like whatever they are. So in here, it is like uh, directly all this is for the asset quality, not like the like it is the Colibra's asset quality, not like the actual table quality. OK, uh, OK, fine. Uh, OK, OK. I, I thought otherwise, I mean, uh, so like there are two things, right? One data quality that we will have on DGC, one is on the like data quality module, like right? On DGC, we cannot have this accuracy, completeness, and this has to be had on the actual data, isn't it? The, the current screen. Like, so whatever rules we have, uh, like, uh, configured based on that, it is complete or consistent or. So, based on the rules, it is showing this matrix. Absolutely, yeah. My question was to is this from the DGC screen or it's a data quality screen? This one, this matrix. DGC screen only. Okay, okay, sorry. Yes, yes. no problem. Yeah, we have traceability responsibility history files in here. Like, so yeah, if I open any kind of asset, we can see. So, yeah, so we have history files responsibilities. Likewise, in this pane, we can see that. Okay. Okay. So. And then in this the uh, like uh, data quality rules will be for the business terms only or anything else? Ah uh, no no no. Like any kind of asset asset are up to us. So for like if I want to configure uh, like this data quality for any data asset or uh, data domain or any kind of assets in Colibra, we can configure and then we can check the quality of the asset. So whether if unpaid is having any kind of acronym, then it is good to go. Likewise, I can check the quality. Got it. So yeah, it is applicable across all the assets. Yes. OK, so yep. So then let's get into this workflows. So first, uh, let's see what the workflow is. And yeah, for configuring this workflow, we should have this Eclipse installed in our machine. So all the workflows will be in the BPM and file. So that is business process modeling notation. So we will be uh, like in talent, we'll be dragging and dropping and we'll be creating the flow and then we'll be writing scripts for each, like each elements. Likewise in workflows also, there will be a BPM and file in which we'll be doing all this. And yeah, so for this uh, setup, we need to install Eclipse and then Groovy inside this in here help install in Eclipse Marketplace, we have to install Groovy and then uh, we need to in install Flowable project. So I will be sending the details like what are the requirements and how, what are the procedure for setting up this workplace. I'll be sending you that PDF. Yes, well, once everything is in place and yeah, we can have this. So yeah, this is how like in this Eclipse Studio, we are going to edit the workflows and we have to create the workflows. Yes, let's see, see it in here. Uh, Nandini Vinod here. Um, mm -hmm, so yes. 
so are you going to in the future classes are you going to show how to create the rules for the specific business term or the catalog are you going to take care of it or uh, the quality so, part so like in mm -hmm. the polyprior data quality dq connector lab is pending mm -hmm. but this uh, this for adding a data quality rule in here i am don't have access so that only i am like in documentation what does i'm this showing here means uh, what does that here means uh, here like, sorry like what what like you are saying uh, to here uh, you need some access like what does that here means like is that like um, uh, in the catalog the global thing access i need or? i need the global permission admin like i need to have the global permission across the like uh, if i have a quality rule in here it will be applicable to the, all the business term so if we see there are like uh, thousands of uh, like committees in here so all the committees uh, will be having the data quality rule assigned so i should have a global access across all the committees or so the global admin rule so if i have the access in this lab i can go ahead and delete this kind of work uh, because of that reason and they are providing access for only single community so in this uh, lab i am having access for only this community like the center face community 00497 so this is the only community i have access so i am adding the communities and domains here so if i have the global access like admin access the edit access over all the community then i can do that uh -huh. so uh Okay, but there is a quality uh, module domain uh, training that you are going to provide, right? Yes, DQ connector that is about. Uh, so see in because majority, you know, quality play quality addition of the validation rules, quality rules plays a key role. Whether it's because uh, the glossary part, you know, is nothing but just adding you all your business glossaries and also the next immediate step is mm. looking at the quality, right? If that is not going to be a part of training, then I don't think this makes any sense of having this because. See, we add all the business terms to Colibra. That's fine. That's a good topic that you have covered up. Okay, but after that, the critical mm -hmm. part is like, how do we add those rules? Because I've been uh, working like uh, the same thing I have done in the different frameworks. Okay, so say for mm -hmm. example, if the product project is going out, so I need to help out not only on the profiling part, but I do have some other uh, defined uh, quality rules also. Okay, I need to apply. So for example, one field. Mm -hmm. Generally, the field is the business term I'm calling as like it has n number of rules. Okay, I need to apply the rules. Yes. That particular field need to come out saying that uh, uh, these many rules are there. Uh, basing on that, your quality for this particular uh, uh, stands at this or this metric stands at uh, here. Like say okay. for example, there are I rule books. Yes, okay. yes. So, so okay. is the I is the, are you going to cover in this training or that's what my question because. No. Rule books are there. Okay, rule books are there. There is a data quality rule is there, they, and we can convert that data quality rule for the predefined assets into data quality metric. So, are this part of training? Uh, like, so you're talking you about aware, uh, right? this data quality rule. Let me complete. You're talking uh -huh. about this data quality rule in this. See, or see, other is DQ what, connector. No, 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 no. See, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's the reason I'm asking you. So, see, I am aware there is a rule book concept in uh, Colibra, okay, where I can add all the rules in one particular place and I can configure the rules and I can assign the assets. So, is it the part of uh, uh, quality module? I am that, that I, I was not aware of that, but there is a rule book in uh, uh, Colibra where we can create all the rules and we can assign it to the specific fields or that what you call that committees or whatever it may be. So is it part of the module or is this uh, part of this? Uh -huh. Like that is uh, separate. Like uh, so, those will be meant that like data assets and technology assets and business asset. Like there is a separate domain. Like that is uh, like this data quality is about whether the business asset in a good quality or not. So that uh, rule book uh, that uh, assets are, will be concentrating mm -hmm. on. Whether we are following the rules, whichever is actually in place, if I'm having the uh, retention period of this uh, domain, this committee, so if this committee holds all, all the patient data or all the health data, like uh, data related to health of a particular uh, particular client or a particular customer, then in the tool, if I have that, I have configured rules, so that should be like kept in the source, like in the data lake, this should be only this for two years. Then I can check that also that uh, rule is like uh, 
implementing the policies uh, provided by government and our organization. So this data quality rule is for checking the asset quality inside this quality graph. So that is a generalized one. So that's what I'm asking. Are, are this part of this training or uh, it is? Uh, uh, I, I, if we if we also see how to add a rule inside Colibra data uh, DGC, we can see. Yeah, I will like tomorrow. Let me show how to add a rule in this domain. Like uh, as importing the business terms and as importing the other data, that we can add the rules too. Like it's a data set, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Sure. Okay, then, okay, so let's get into this workflow then. Okay, so this are the out of the workflows in Colibras. We can directly download from this marketplace. Like, uh, like defaultly, Colibra is providing this kind of workflows. And then, if we want to like customize, we can customize it. So, yeah, we see the resource based workflows approval process and assign owner to a data set and the can cancel process if we are like if you want to cancel access to a particular people for a particular data set likewise and escalation process if the issue is not met then if i want to escalate so i can initiate this workflow and how to management and how for issue like moving on issues so we have a workflow and post data ingestion workflow which we saw that we discuss about for for this uh, workflows so if i'm ingesting any data i have if i have enabled this post data ingestion workflow then if the workflow is start and it will be asking for me to Assign a technical data steward and business data steward and committee manager, data custodians. So, like whatever the roles, uh, like mandated in the workflow, it will be prompting us, uh, prompting the data owner to assign, and then yes, provide comments and rating. Likewise, so whenever a uh, data source is ingested, this workflow will be starting. If I have enabled this workflow, likewise, we have request access assets access. So if I want to request access, I can shop for the data and add it into a data basket and I have, can start this workflow and simple approval and voting sub process. So this kind of workflows we have and then these are the global workflows. So this is like uh, mostly uh, like dependent on a particular kind of resource. Like for I will be requesting access of this resource belongs to customer likewise. So these are the global workflows. We can say there is no need uh, like Everyone can start uh, and as a logged in user, I can log a issue. I can focus on new business or set like blue the system or code value. So these are uh, global workflows like it is not dependent on any kind of resources such as like for. If I want to like for this uh, workflow, it will be uh, dependent on the resource that we are ingesting. So once the resource is getting ingested into Colibra, this workflow will start. But this for this kind of global workflows, we don't have any context. I can directly go and start and I can propose a new in this system. Likewise, it is not dependent on anything. I can directly propose any kind of assets. Like, yeah, these are the global workflows. Yeah. So for starting any workflows, we will be uh, like uh, there is a in dashboard. If we have having the workflow widget, I can go ahead. Or otherwise, in global create, I can check in actions. I can check the workflows available. Let me show that in Polita. Just a minute, I will be logging in this workflow lab and sharing again. So, yes. So, yeah. So, in this dashboard, in this dashboard, we can see like propose a new business term, propose. Like uh, this sort of the workflows are configured in this dashboard. So we can directly, if the workflows are being configured in the dashboard, we can directly start it from here. Or otherwise, in this global create button, in this actions, I can see the workflows for emailing users, like email users immediately. Like these kind of workflows are there. Like I can search it in here for the workflow I have created. So these are the workflows I have created. Likewise, I can search it and if I click, it will be starting the workflow. So these are the two options. Or otherwise, if a workflow is particularly related to any kind of business term, for example, if uh, for proposing any, like if I have enabled a simple approval for any business term, I can check in the asset page and these are the workflows, so approval process. 
so I can start it from here also. That's it. Right? So if I click here, it will be starting the workflow. Yes. So yeah. So these are two methods how we will be starting a workflow. And then so yeah, for creating a workflow, we'll be having uh, the start like these are the elements that we'll be using for any workflows. So we'll be checking that. So in Eclipse, if we see, so this here we will be having. So I can drag and drop it from here, and then I can use it in here. So for the start event, end event, task, container, gateway, boundary event, we'll be seeing uh, what like each element is meant for. Let's just just uh, have a brief on that. Like this event, between event we have start event and end event. Uh, start event uh, will be we will be having this. Element when starting any kind of workflow, it will be having this element. And in end event, like while the workflow comes to an end, we'll be having the end event. And in intermediate event, it is not mandatory. If we want, we can have. And this is like any kind of activity, like script task, user task will be there. So it will be mentioned in this rectangle box and gateway. So for example, if we say if uh, user A accepts the decision, then like and user like the variable will be stored and it will be coming into the flow, will be flowing in here. And if user B accept the decision, and it will be flowing in here. So for this icon, will be checking the decision. So if A is okay, A is uh, true, and B is true, it will be. If it is and, it will be checking whether both the uh, uh, like a flow is true. It will be giving a true output, or otherwise it is a false output. Likewise, we have the gateways. So XOR like it will be uh, taking decision based on XOR, and if we are or if any one is uh, right, then the result will be true. Likewise. Any of the data source, data source A or B. If anyone accepted, then uh, give me the output as accepted. Likewise, we are having this much gateways, XOR and even base database, and then OR. So, and we have SQL flow for connecting the start event with any kind of uh, activity, and then connecting the end event. We have SQL flow. This is normal flow. Will be this like this, and exception flow. Like uh, if we are having any boundary event, uh, like for for example. I am waiting uh, for this task to be completed for uh, five days, and then if still not completed, then move on to this way. Likewise, I can mention in case of exception how we need to handle that. Likewise, we have, and for example, this is the approval process workflow. Let's see how will be uh, like what is the process going on behind this. And if you see, the user can start the workflow, uh, and then it will be going on to this review definition. So if any kind of uh, element is in this like dark one, then it is another workflow. Like it is a call activity actually. In this call activity, we'll be call calling some other workflow. So this call activity will be calling this review definition. And uh, yeah, so this uh, the subject matter expert should uh, will be like involving in this workflow, and he should review the definition. And if he provides accepted, then it will be uh, moving to uh, under review. Uh, if he rejects that uh, this business term like this approval is not required and if he reject it will be moving on to this rejected definition so in case if we accept that it will be moving like in this flow it will be moving on to provide command for the, it will be prompting uh, like uh, the stakeholder will be tasked with this one for adding command so it will task this uh, it will like invoke this workflow so yes so in this workflow, we can uh, the stakeholder needs to create a, like it will be creating a comment variable, and it will be asking the this kind of task is a user task. So this will be asking the user in here stakeholder for providing the comment, and it will store the comment. So this are the user task icon. This is script task. Likewise, we have, and then this once this workflow ended, so this is like a bound time boundary event. So it will be waiting for five business days, like otherwise three business days or any kind of time we can give. So yeah, if this is done, if uh, it is completed, then it will move on to process commands. So if the time limit exceeds, like for five business time, like five business days, uh, the stakeholder is not provided any command. Then also it will be moving to this process commands, and then it will the commands will be stored in the data asset, and then it is calling the vote for approval. It is approaching the steward for approval, whether you are approving or not. Like it will be, uh, it will be triggering that uh, vote sub process. That uh, that work workflow, and then if the workflow is like ends in a good state, then if it is accepted, then the flow will be moving as marked as accepted, and then it will be notifying stakeholders that uh, the data stewards are provided 
adaptive, like accepted this one, the sub level, and then it will notify the start user that your like uh, your definition is approved by the stewards. <coughs> and then it will be coming to an end. Just a minute, guys. Okay, so yeah, so yes, so in case of rejection, uh, it will notify the stakeholders that business towards has rejected the support, and then and also the staff your user will be notified with this. And yeah, and I can end it from there, or otherwise, if I want to review the definition, if I want to add a new like in this case, uh, it will be not uh, the start user will be. Be notified that the definition is uh, rejected by the stewards, and then in this case, uh, the review definitions are again called, and like the subject matter expert will be rejecting that in this time as steward is not accepting. Then it will be like the use, like the user will be notified that the definition is rejected. Likewise, we can configure the workflow in Eclipse. Uh, we can add the required elements. We can drag and drop, and then for each each element, we'll be adding the Required uh, scripts, Groovy scripts, or JavaScript. JavaScript uh, in JavaScript language we can use, and then we'll be deploying the workflow in Colibra, and then we can enable it from there. We'll be seeing that how to deploy. So now let's just uh, get in, like uh, get a brief about the elements that are uh, in the Eclipse Studio. So what are the elements that we can use for configuring our workflow? Is uh, like. But uh, Nandi, before that, yeah, is it all these? Isn't isn't the all these workflow are inbuilt in Colibra? I don't know, right? If you have created one business asset or business term, basically, shouldn't all those workflow are like automatically attached to that? Right. For okay. each asset, we need to create a different workflow. I don't know. Okay. Like whether the workflow is already present in Colibra while uh, we are having a new DPC, or yes. otherwise we need to configure that you're asking. So some yes. of the workflow samples are there. Like yeah. So the ten like if we see this one, uh, this uh, these are the like Colibra itself provides this template, and then we can directly incorporate the template as per our recommend. Like uh, for example, for requesting access. So if we think uh, for requesting access, all the request access uh, should uh, meet like a particular person will be there. And he will be reviewing the request access and he will be providing the access. If I want to configure that, then I can do so. So in some cases, we'll be having different committees. And for each committee, some people should look into the people and they can decide uh, whether the access can be given or provided or not. Likewise, uh, we need to configure the basic template. We can uh, check, uh, we can get from Polybras marketplace for this one. And as per our, we can directly incorporate that in most of the cases, as per our operating model, we need to Change for example, if this request access asset access is having only one data steward for approval, it will be reaching only one data steward. But for a particular committee, I am having two to three data stewards. So if one uh, person is only, I thinking the uh, workflow should uh, prompt response from some other data steward. Likewise, I can configure according to our needs. So these are the templates uh, like we can get from previous marketplace and we can incorporate in our DGC. Yes. Okay, so yes. just a minute, guys. Okay, we can continue. Okay, so we have a pool and stream link. So this will be the uh, like working that uh, will be the backbone for any of the workflows. First, uh, we have to like have a pool 
and then in pool we can have multiple lanes. So for this lane, uh, the user tags will be uh, like prompting result from stewards. Like if I have uh, any kind of user like ID group, business group. So if I want to get response from them, then in this lane I, I can like configure their role in here so that uh, whatever user task in here, it will be prompting response from the respective users to work or a community manager as such. So this is the pool and this is the lane. And we'll be having a start and end events. So yeah, start event will be like this when the process start and end event uh, will be like this in the final, like the final flow will be reaching at this end of the path. So you can see in here. So this is the entire pool. The pool is approval process. This is the lanes, sub, uh, like the multiple lanes. And if the start user is like, like for if this uh, lane is configured with the start user, so notification will be sent to start user. So if I have like a note, like I have a uh, notify stakeholders in here. So this notification will be uh, sent to this stakeholder. Like wait for in uh, like if it is in a uh, provide command so there is a user task in this lane so stake a holder should be acting upon this user task likewise i can uh, divide the lanes and i can add uh, if i think the data steward should uh, perform this action then i can uh, have those kind of uh, script tasks in here likewise so we'll be having different lanes and pools one pool and in pool there will be multiple swim lanes and we have user task so like provided user task will be with this icon, like provide command uh, as we saw. So like uh, user task will be uh, will be asking the response from any kind of user, like a human actor, he need to perform, like uh, this user task will be, uh, for example, if I want to uh, have some command from the stakeholder, then, then I can uh, create the user task in that claim. And then if I have this field, then the uh, like this uh, stakeholder can provide comment in here. Yes. When the process execution arrives at such user task, a new task is created in the task of user. For example, uh, like uh, for in this case, while the work workflow reaches the state, like the workflow uh, someone has started and subject matter expert has uh, reviewed the definition and he is accepted. And while this uh, like when the user task when the flow reaches the user task, then the stakeholder will be having a task assigned in this Colibas task. So, for example, if I am a business steward, I can check the task assigned to me. Likewise, uh, this user task will assign a task to the stakeholder, and then the stakeholder needed to be acted upon that. Likewise, and uh, we have form and form properties. For example, for requesting access, I need to get multiple inputs like uh, till which date uh, I need to give the access and, and what are the things uh, like uh, the def like I need to reason why I rec I'm raising this request and uh, like for what I'm working for. Likewise, if I want to get multiple inputs from a user, I can have this form like this. And yeah, so the user task, if this user task I in mean here, they, there are only one box for providing comments. Likewise, I can have multiple uh, input fields for providing uh, like it will be uh, prompting users to pro to fill all the fields. Likewise, if I want to have multiple, I want to get multiple inputs from the user. Like for uh, like for example, for one data request access, I need to get uh, multiple details. Then I can use this form properties. I can use form in the user task. And yeah, so this each uh, for example, so the name. The type I need to like. So, for example, for this command, it will be uh, like uh, it will be like a my, uh, for example, it uh, might be a paragraph or it might be a text or it might be a number. Or likewise, I need to uh, give the type. Whether it, there will be a string input or like it is a button, they will be choosing one among the two. Or likewise, we will be configuring configuring this command and the like the variables uh, that will be passed in this command. In here, likewise, whether it is readable, writable, required, we'll be seeing that. Likewise, I'll be configuring that the from property. So, if I think or like, if you see what is readable and writable, so if readable is true, then 
a, like when the workflow is running, it will it will be like it will be visible to the users. For example, the comment it is readable too. So the stakeholder can see this box and he can he can provide his comment in here. If it is false, then it will it can be only configured from the Colibra platform. Like if it is false, that particular box is false, then uh, user can't be like in the workflow he can't edit it. But uh, we have if we have admin access, we can edit it in this Colibra's uh, like workflows. That like from the back end, we can do modification on the particular field. If it is true, from the front end, like in the user interface, we can add the comments. Yeah. So for writable, so if the writable is true, then the user can change the current value. Like uh, this, if the comment writable is true, then I can add a particular comment in like, uh, I can provide a variable in here and I can save it. If it is required and if I set the status to require, then like come it will be like mandatory so compulsorily this uh, field that should uh, like for, for example for request access uh, we are having a uh, 10 kind of uh, form variables for example say one is for reason and another one is for like uh, like a description and the another one is for uh, start date and end date and i i'm mandating i'm making required this reason start date and end date and description is not mandatory likewise so even if the user does not do this description, he can he will be able to proceed. Likewise, so we can mark some certain fields as required. And from types, so what are the input types that we can give in the form? For example, if we see this form, uh, we can give a string, line of text, text area. If it's a multi-line, if it is a paragraph, then we can have a like text area. So if I'm uh, giving a string in this one, then only one line comment, like one line, uh, like only one sentence will can be uh, provided as input for this. So if I'm having a text in here, then I can give a paragraph input in here. For example, the reason and all, there will be multiple lines. So better we can go with this text area data type and long, whether a whole number or boolean, true or false. So like you are, a, you are already you have access to Colibra, two or false, like this kind of questions, you can do this Boolean and date time, if for start date and end date, you can do this uh, date time and if I want to upload a file, I can do this option in here. Likewise, a radio box and check box. So yeah, uh, whether you have this kind of access in Colibra, we can check one by one. Likewise, you can check box input, we can get from form and thing and uh, this button, like this kind of button, value one or value two, value three, you can select along this one. Likewise, this is a kind of form we can have and we can get uh, input from the user in this form. If I'm starting a request access workflow, I need to answer all the questions mentioned in the form, which are mandatory, like this. So this is about form and we have exclusive gateways. So if you see, uh, exclusive, okay. so exclusive gateway uh, is used for modeling a decision in the process. Like if this person is accepting, then like move into this flow. If this person rejected this approval, then move into the uh, like some other flow. Likewise, we can have decision using this exclusive uh, gateway. Yeah, that is I mentioned here. Like if the condition is true, then it will be flowing on this path. If the condition is false, it will be flowing on this way. Likewise, we have exclusive gateway and we have boundary even like for setting a time limit for users. So if a business uh, steward is tasked with up, uh, voting for approval and he's taking too much of time, for example, business stewards uh, in most cases, they will be like, uh, as they are, as they are like con concerned with this Colibras system, they might give response immediately, but the stakeholders, they might have some other, like uh, they, they will be like uh, having the overall responsibility. So they might or might not be interested in providing the comments. So I think uh, even if stakeholder is not providing comments for five business days, then I can proceed with the uh, next step. Likewise, I can have a boundary event. So if this task, if user is not uh, uh, like, if this user is not uh, like processing the task for five business days, then move on to this flow. Likewise, I can have, I can set the time and I can wait and then the flow can be like redirected to some other. Likewise, we have time boundary event. This is the icon for that. And we have service task in workflow. And service task like implements a Java situation. Like if 
this is like a market accepted. If the business forward is accepting the approval and if this variable is true, then mark as accepted. So like the status of the asset will be changed to accepted or the status of the asset will be changed to rejected. We'll be checking a certain condition and then if the condition is fine, then it will be marked as accepted or rejected. Likewise, we have server tasks and call activity. So it is reusable and call activity refers to process that is external to the workflow. So this work for approval workflow is like a completely a different workflow which is in Colibra that is voting sub process. This is that sub process. So using this call activity, I can call then trigger that workflow. So if you see the process of voting the process, we can see it here. Like this call activity is used for triggering some other workflow which is in Colibra in accordance with this workflow. So other than that, we have sub process. So inside a uh, like uh, inside a workflow, we have another sub workflow. You can see here. So yeah, it is not reusable. Only once it will be triggered for the first time. Like if it is running in a loop, for example, if we see it in here, like if uh, the in case of rejection, it will be again moving on to say a subject matter expert and then he can uh, he can alter something and he can again uh, redo this flow like it is a infinite loop maybe. So in that case, if it is again and again, this workflow is running again and again, it may not to be uh, like a stakeholder is not to be like stakeholder once if you have provide comment that is enough. So if we want to have certain things one time, then we can have in this sub process. But this call activity it is reusable. Again, the steward will be the business steward will be reviewing the definition and he will be making some definition changes. And then again, they can see what are the changes made and again they can vote for approval. But the comment is one time event. So it will reach it here as it is one time, as it is already provided, then the process will be moving on like this. So yeah. So in this uh, in this scenario, we'll be seeing uh, I am a admin, so I am going to perform some changes in the console or something platform. So I need to send a mail to all of the users in Colibra. So how to do this via workflow? We'll be seeing that. Before that, I'll look into Colibra once and then come into the Java API. So Colibra's workflow. Just let's have a look. For, for see, checking the workflows, I need to go to the check, uh, settings page and workflows definitions. So whatever workflow I have configured my with my clips, I can upload it in here. If I don't have any kind of error, mostly my process ID, like the my pool ID should be unique. For this pool, for this pool, uh, there may be like there's an idea name that should be unique. So if I am using uh, so this much users already having uh, like configure some of the workflows. So my pool ID should be unique among them. So if pool ID is unique, it will be like if I have the admin access, I can directly upload the file in here and then it will be listed in here. So I can check that. So this much of workflows are there in Colibra in this VGC. I can check the workflows in here. So let me let me open one of the workflows. So let's open this email user immediately. So I'm opening this workflow definition. So for this workflow, what a description I have made, like I can edit the description. So what this workflow does, so it will be very like easy to understand. So the workflow I have added this description. It will be sending an email to the user or group. And yeah, likewise, what the workflows, what are the things I have used? Like I'm, what are the uh, process I'm uh, having in this workflow? I can mention it in here. Description I can edit and start label. Like the name of this workflow, the start level is starting, but the name of the workflow and start even. So in some cases, uh, we can have an even based workflow. If someone is like, if someone is deleting a domain, they can start this workflow. 
like that event will be triggering this so this data ingestion workflow post data ingestion workflow is also a event based workflow if someone is registering a data source and someone is refreshing like ingesting the data source <coughs> just a minute guys So if someone is ingesting any data source and someone is like, uh, yeah, ingesting any kind of Excel files inside Colibra, then then uh, the post uh, data ingestion workflow, if we have enabled, it will start based on that event. And then it will be asking the user to set the business to a data store likewise. So we can have event based workflow. So some kind of event, if it is happening inside Colibra, it will be triggered. And then, and applies to it is global. So if this workflow applies to only particular domain or a particular committee, I can add that. So if it is global, it is a uh, it can be used across all the all the like it can be uh, accessed entirely. Like if it is a uh, like uh, for example echo access. So I limit it only for this community. Then only this community for raising access for this community or this domain will be using that so if i kept it global like anyone can use from the direct global create button <coughs> and then the rules who can start the workflow who can stop the workflow and who can really attend the task inside the workflow i can edit so or or any particular user group can do this likewise so yeah, I can configure the rules. Uh, so if I have configured the sysadmin, only the sysadmin can start this workflow like this. And what are the variables I'm using in this workflow? That will be listed in here. Like who are the recipients? So for this uh, email, I'm using the uh, variable for getting like the username in which uh, like the mail ID of the user to whom uh, the mail should be triggered. Likewise, what are the variables I'm using inside the workflow will be listed in here and I can select this. So whether any signed in user can start the workflow, yes, I'm, che uh, I'm checking that. Like uh, during the workflow start, uh, like whether I need to check the candidate user. So if whether they have access, like if there is Like for example, uh, this is candidate users check workflow. Like if I'm having uh, in my workflow, I'm having some of the tasks configured for stakeholders and some of the tasks uh, business to what should be doing and some of the tasks are like adding comments. I will be uh, like I will be uh, having community managers for that. Likewise, if I have four of the roles inside my workflow, it uh, uh, if I check this, it will be perf uh, it will be uh, checking whether all the roles mentioned inside workflow is actually there. For example, a committee manager should have uh, should add comments in my workflow like I have configured like that. And if don't if I don't have community manager for a particular committee, then it will not start. Likewise, the user check <coughs> whether this workflow like uh, like uh, only once at the time on a specific resource. For a particular resource for a particular business term uh, if multiple like i have already for i have for example i have created a business asset and i have just started the workflow and if i deselected this i can multiple times start the workflow and multiple times the like the task will be uh, assigned to the stakeholders so better to check this so if one workflow for business uh, term for example i'm started up approval process so like uh, until this is completed, I can start another workflow, another approval process for that business term. Likewise, and show in global trade. If I check this, I can have this in here. In this global create, I can see this name. For example, inside this section, 
or I can directly search from there. Zero zero seven zero four. So yeah, email. 